I think so. Yeah, I figured it out. Yeah, for me. <laughs> Whether or not it works for anybody else, I don't know. But for me, it's okay. Well, and you also present through Bang on a Can. So how has that um, affected your, your life as a composer? Um, I think one of the things that's really... I, again, I don't know what it's like as a, as a violinist, although the, the violinists I know who um, you know, came through places like Juilliard, I know it's very competitive. And um, composing is very competitive also. So I, mean, I think there was a way in which, um, for some of the time I was raised, my education seemed like what you were supposed to do as a composer was figure out all of your colleagues that you can push in front of buses so that, um, you know, work wouldn't come to them, you know, that you should wish your colleagues ill. Um, and so I think one of the nice things about Bang on a Can, which, which I, I think is really important, is that it was a way to figure out early on how to create a world where musicians could be nice to each other and where composers could actually coexist. The point was to say one kind of music is great and all the other kinds of music are terrible and the point of doing this one piece is to um, is to make all other kinds of music irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think one of the things that's nice about it is it, it's a way of sort of being out in public and um, generous and optimistic and um, you know kind of utopian at the same time which I really love. How do people get involved in Bang on a Did that answer your question? What? Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Do you pick the people who, who are involved in Bang on a Can, or do they submit? Like, how does that go? How does it work? Like, the people who perform and the people who... All different ways. So. Yeah, go ahead. It's all different ways. You know, we're, we're open to every avenue. When, when we started Bang on a Can, um, there were festivals around where there would be you know, a couple of people and their decisions were mysterious and you never knew how to get to them. So we've tried to make it so that there are many avenues to get in. We have a call for proposals where ensembles or performers or composers can send their stuff. Mm -hmm. And we sit down regularly and go through all of those proposals and we go through them with everyone's names blocked off because we know a lot of people and we don't want to actually be influenced by the people we know. Mm -hmm. Some of the people we know who we love who are really um, great people may not be the greatest composers and likewise there may be people around who we don't like who are really great composers and performers and you know we don't want to be influenced by that. Um, but there are also other ways, you know, there are other kinds of things that um, pieces that we want to play and those lead to other kinds of things. Generally, we try to be open to lots of different avenues of getting to us. So on the website, it says, you know, to anybody who, you know, wants to apply, how to apply. So. Okay. And you mentioned that composition is competitive. Um, that must be a very difficult thing because when you write the music, the music can't just shout out, I'm here, um, play me. And because I think with, um, with instrumentalists, I think of the competition as being like the, it's just louder, you know, because you're making the noise. <laughs> I kind of right. feel like if you're competing with each other, you can just play and people will hear it. But with composition, you have to get the music performed in addition, like people don't hear it unless it's performed. So how do you, how, what, is it, what does it mean to be competitive as a composer and how do you maneuver that? Well, I think, I don't feel competitive with other people as a composer. I mean, I, I think that was the way I was raised. Because mm -hmm. the idea was um, there are no opportunities and there's no money and it's a terrible life. So the only value to it is being able to say that um, this person standing next to you, um, I'm incrementally better than that person. You know, mm -hmm. So it's just for you know, how you psych yourself into waking up in the morning. You know, and... You know, in school, in the schools that I went to, some of them, you were encouraged to, um, you know, tear other people down in order to build yourself up or build your teacher up or whatever. And I think the weird thing is that for performers, there's a need for performers. You know, and at least there's there's an obvious need for performers. That in order to make the music, it has to actually um, be made yeah. by someone in front of. You. Right. You know, so there actually is a, a reason why people keep going into that and, you know, why, you know, hopefully, you know, that will, it will change, but it won't die. 
Um, the weird thing for composers is there's so much great music that's already written, that, and there's so many other things that already um, function without any new music at all, or very little new music, that one of the things that happens with composing is that um, you need pieces that make people convinced that there's a need for new music. So actually, I think it's the, it really should be the opposite of competition. You know, when another composer goes out and has a big success, what it really does for me is it makes audiences and presenters and performers aware of the fact that composers are still alive, that music is still being made, and that we need composers to come in and refresh the, the field, which is what I sort of feel we, we do. You know, so I actually feel like, in a way, it's the opposite of competition. I feel like when somebody does something which is successful, it helps me, even if it has nothing directly to do with me. Yeah. So, but that's very much the opposite of the way I, I think I was taught. And it's very, I think, the opposite of the way I think, you know, there's some European models of education which are still very, um, you know, sort of, um, you know, they have the idea of the composer as the lone um, genius man who, you know, um, is the only person in the world who understands everything perfectly and everyone else is inadequate and, you know, I, I'm, I'm not into that. I just don't think that's very healthy. I think what you describe is much healthier um, for the composers and for the music world. And it's just, I think when, when things are positive and helpful, it makes a big difference.